Y'all, do I have a story to tell you? Y'all just don't get it. Or you might. Have you ever had a role model? Someone that you've seen the likeness of and you just imagine. Like, eh. I don't know how they got there, but whatever they're doing, I wish I could just be in their presence to engulf some of their knowledge, some of their wisdom, and just to see how they are as a person. Well, I've met my role model. And I will talk about that story in a brief moment. What's good, YouTube? Today is Friday, so you know what that means. It is time for another Flashback Friday. I am Paul Neal, a multifaceted creative, and I'm using Flashback Friday as a way of telling stories with you so that hopefully you can gain some insight or some inspiration. Hopefully you tell me what you would have done in that situation, and hopefully we become like internet friends by telling stories back and forth. I still have yet to make any friends by doing this. One of these days though, and today I want to tell you about that one time that I met Melanie Faye. If you don't know who Melanie Faye is, then you know you, I don't even understand why you're watching this video. But let me go ahead and tell you about who this person is. Before I even get into her spill, I want to tell you about the situation that lined up for me to meet her, and then I'm going to tell you about her, right? So at a point in time, majority of my income as a musician came from me standing on the side of the road with a cup in my hand like a beggar. Okay, well maybe instead of a cup, it was a tip jar. And instead of me begging, I was street performing. We call that busking. And I usually don't just do it on the side of the road. Don't think that you'll just see me on the side of a random street like Candler Road. No, I am usually in a high traffic area like a park of some sort. I kind of see benefits when it comes to busking. A lot of people like to downplay busking musicians because they think, oh, well, you're just out there. You don't know how much money you're going to make. Look, if you got it, you got it. And if you don't got it, then you know, you might as well just stop talking about it and stop thinking about it. But me, I feel like I got it or I at least understand it enough. And by it, I'm referring to crowd interaction. I'm referring it to what the people like. I'm referring it to giving a show. You got to have fun with this. So one time while I was street performing at the Atlanta Boat Line, it was just a regular day for me. This might have been 2021 or 2022. I made it a point where I was street performing maybe like four times a week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or just Friday, Sunday, sometimes twice a day. It just depends on how the day was looking, but I used busking as my way of making money. I had to, I didn't have any other job. Street performing was what I did. So it was just a normal day on the belt line for me. I'm sitting there playing my songs. And then uh, a girl comes up to me and she's like, oh wow, good job, good job. And her mom is behind her like, make her sing. My baby could sing, so make her sing. And you know, I'm just being cordial. I'm like, oh, so you sing? And she's like, mm, sometimes, what do you know? And I'm like, I can play anything I hear. And she said, do you know, uh, girl, put your records on? It's been going viral lately. So I'm like, oh, I actually just did a cover to this. I had to listen to it for a little bit. And I start playing the chords. She starts jumping in. She's singing the crowd forms, a literal crowd forms. And this is the best part that I like about street performing. Oftentimes people might walk past you Sometimes people will like stop for like maybe five seconds and listen to you drop their $1, $5, $10, $20 tip or donation and then keep it pushing. But sometimes it turns into a concert, like it turns into a full fledged concert. And when it turns into a concert, that's the best part. So a crowd forms in the middle of us performing Girl Put Your Records On. And the girl is singing, like not singing, she's singing. And she sounds decent, like she sounds solid for sure, for sure, for sure. And as soon as we actually finish the song, everybody's clapping and you can see the crowd disperse as they are clapping. But in the center of the crowd, as it is dispersing, it's like the Red Sea has parted. And I see the image of somebody who I consider to be my role model on this instrument, Melanie Faye. She's just sitting there clapping. I stop. I'm staring at her. I'm like, ain't no way. I said, you're not here right now. Are you here right now? She said, yeah. I said, can you play my guitar? <laughs> Just took the guitar off and handed it to her. She said, what? She was actually there with two of her friends. They were visiting her from Tennessee. I'm assuming that's her hometown friend. So she decided to take them to the belt line for a little stroll and ended up seeing street performers. Street performers are always at the belt line. You'll always find people selling snacks selling drinks, selling art, selling clothes, selling something. The Atlanta Belt Line is often like a vendor's arena and we're talking about the fact that Melanie Faye was there. You don't know who Melanie Faye is? Let's talk about her. Melanie Faye is a guitarist, bassist, producer, and songwriter who captured the world's attention in 2017. After taking the digital world by storm, Melanie's R&B style has been lauded by John Mayer, Quincy Jones, her, and other legendary players. In addition to working with major guitar brands, Melanie has performed with Willow Smith, No Name, Maggie Rogers, Haley Williams, Jamila Woods, 
Masego, and Mac DeMarco. And I tell you, Melanie's performed and touched the hearts of so many people, including myself. And she has such a signature sound. You can tell a real guitarist when you can hear their voice speak through the guitar. And there's only a few guitarists that really have captured a certain style or a certain tone where it's obviously recognizable. And Melanie Faye is one of those people. Even on um, some songs that don't even actually have her name as a featured artist or give her credit in it, I'll hear a solo and I'm like, I bet that's Melanie. And then I listen to it again and I'm like, that's definitely Melanie. And I have to do some research and boom, she's on the song. So that lets you know something. And yes, my first time seeing her was that viral video in 2017 when everybody started to see her sitting on her bedroom floor with a bandana wrapped around her head playing guitar and to be honest everybody knows social media virality is completely hard to achieve oftentimes musicians or artists are seen mostly for doing covers or remixes of something that sounds recognizable so going viral for an original is hitting a whole another level if you ask me a lot of people wanted a piece of melody at that point so she received a lot of publicity and a whole lot of opportunities after that viral video as i've already mentioned she has sponsorships with major guitar brands she has her own npr tiny desk home concert that lets you know that you have have some sort of stature i met somebody that had a tiny desk concert give me like a year or two i'm gonna be on tiny desk just i'm just claiming it i'm claiming it i'm reaching it and i'm grabbing it i'm going to be on tiny desk in a year or two wait on it like kanye said i made jesus walks i'm never going to hell and like chance the rapper said i met kanye west i'm never gonna fail that's how i feel about melanie Faye and my guitar playing she's blessed me by playing my instrument and then we even became somewhat like friends that might be a stretch that she probably wouldn't claim me as a friend unless we see each other more often. I don't know what the universe has lined up, but crazy thing about the entire thing, she approached me for my guitar playing. So boom, let me backtrack and go back to the story. At the belt line, I let her play my guitar and most people didn't even recognize her. She considers herself a micro celebrity because she's not like big name where everybody's stopping and crowding her. Like if you see, I don't know, Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole at State Farm Arena or at Mercedes Benz and they got a whole entourage of security. No, she takes casual strolls sometimes down the street. And that is the perfect amount of celebrityism or popularity that I would love to achieve. I don't want security. Well, everybody wants security, but I don't want security. I don't want top flight security walking around me. You know what I'm saying? So while she's playing the guitar, I immediately call my best friend who I also know is a fan of Melanie Faye. I want to say this is the same person who sent me the video of Melanie Faye when she was going viral. And I said, dog, Kiana, get down to the belt line right now. Around the end of Melanie playing was around the time that Kiana pulled up to the belt line. She's actually a film director, a photographer. We were ecstatic that day. We saw that as an opportunity of lifetime. Even after like we departed and went our own separate ways, me and Kiana were just talking about how all of our experiences just seem so grand. And sometimes we take normal days for granted. We talked about even creating a calendar where we call it like our calendar of special events or a timeline of special events where all we're doing is just documenting specific dates on a timeline of special things or things that we thought were super special that we never would have expected to happen. So meeting Melanie Faith was one of those unexpected things. A couple weeks later, me and Kiana met back up at the Beltline. We're near the same spot that Melanie saw us the first time just to work on some project stuff. At this time, Kiana was a grad student at SCAD and she was working on her cinematography degree. If that's the specific degree pathway, don't quote me. I'm sorry if I'm butchering this, Kiana. But we were working on a short film near the bathroom. The short film was crazy. That's why it was near the bathroom. So, And lo and behold, driving around through the parking lot, Melanie Faye, she stops all cool like. What's up? <laughs> I'm sitting there like, not you back again. What up, Melanie? And then she said, hey. I said, what you got going? She said, I just came from Piedmont Park and now I'm just out i was already out in atlanta so i just decided to see what was going on at the belt line so we're just chit-chatting casually talking and by we me kiana and melanie and melanie decided to invite us to her house so we grabbed lunch and pulled up to melanie's house very calm very chill folks are just chilling you know how like people our age we don't really have much to do it's not like we're really gonna be out so we were just sitting there casually talking casually jamming i didn't have my instrument this time because i was just helping kiana with her film I was just there as a tech running errands if needed, if she needed somebody to go to the store really quickly. I was the chauffeur driving her around. I was um, helping out with sound if she needed sound help or like holding a camera or like propping something open. Just any help that you can have when it comes to doing a short film. I was just there to help Kiana. So I didn't have my equipment or anything, but when we put up to Melanie's crib, Melanie has multiple guitars. She actually showed me some of the guitars that were customly made for her and given to her by certain brands. 
and allowed me to play on her guitar this time. So now it's like she blessed my guitar, I blessed hers. And I was playing some of my original songs and she was sitting there like, ooh, what is that? I love luscious black chords. And I'm like, black people chords. I wish I had a guitar in this room. I only got the bass, my guitar's in the living room. <laughs> Let me grab it. I decided to grab the acoustic to save time. So I'm playing very luscious chords. Messed up on that chord, but you know music. And Melanie's sitting there like snapping her fingers. making verbal responses like, ooh, what is that? And she's like, I love that chord. That's like a, uh, that's a dominant sharp nine, isn't it? And I said, yeah, I think. I, <laughs> I was playing that song and I was also playing Apathy, my latest single, which had like open strings. And she's sitting there literally like Michael Jackson dancing. <laughs> to that part. Snapping our fingers. So we're sitting there having a ball, having a good time, really just jamming around. She picks up the guitar. I passed the guitar to Kiana. I taught Kiana how to play the guitar when we were younger. I've known Kiana all my life. That's a little tidbit. So I taught Kiana a little thing, a thing or two about guitar, but Kiana's like, I don't really play. So she didn't want to play in front of me or in front of Melanie because she feels a little shy. And not to say I'm the GOAT, but you know, Melanie the GOAT. So she's like, I don't want to play around greatness. So I don't know. I seek a certain form of validation just from having somebody who I viewed as my guitar role model listen to my songs in person at her own crib on her instrument and, and literally said that they liked what I did. And she even said, if I ever just want to jam or if we, she was really talking to me and Kiana, if we ever just want to jam or like record content or like make anything, like we can do that. And I am slaw, I never took her up on the offer, but I don't believe that the universe is as cut and dry as it is. I don't think that me and Melanie's story is completely ended. I don't believe that we're never gonna see each other again. I don't think that we're not gonna perform together. You never know where the world will take you and what opportunities may arise. So one of these days, that's all I'm gonna say on it. I already said that I'm gonna be on NPR's tiny desk in like the next two years. So one of these days, you're going to see me with top notch names. Right now you heard it first on Flashback Friday. But I don't know, what do you think? How would you have reacted in this situation? Tell me what you would have done. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me if you've been in a similar situation to this. Let's talk, let's tell stories, let's become internet friends. I told y'all I don't got no friends. Hit me up. Please subscribe, I'm close to a thousand. I'm trying to hit these 4,000 watch hours. I'm trying to get this page monetized, so help me y'all. Help me out, help me out. Again, this is a form of storytelling to help remind myself that I have some sort of success in my music career. Oftentimes I have imposter syndrome and I know that everybody as a creative can face imposter syndrome, the dreaded imposter syndrome, where we're sitting here wondering, what are we doing? What am I even doing right now? I have no idea what I'm doing with music. I have no idea where I'm going. It happens, all of us face it. So sometimes you have to take each day by day and write it down in your gratitude journal or put it on your timeline or your calendar of significant events and just document it. Tell the story. Tell somebody how it feels. And that way you will remind yourself that you had some level of success, which is what I am doing with Flashback Fridays. Can't wait to see you in the next video.